whatever you say you're about, just be about that. If you about wearing leather flag jackets, be about it. If you're about an awesome, outstanding salt and pepper beard like Noble, be about it. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying is just be about it. But it takes that EQ. It takes that emotional intelligence. And and it's crazy because if you if you think about EQ in forms of music, EQ is leveling out all the sound waves in a certain mix of a song. So if you are EQing your life and yourself, you are evening out and leveling out all the different waves and peaks and valleys in your life. So everything sounds good to everyone or most people, if they like your type, <laughs> if they like your type of music, whether it's hip hop, rock or whatever, but that's, a, that goes the same for EQ training. I feel like it levels out your life and it makes you a better person, more well-rounded. And it allows you to see a lot of things that you wouldn't see. Why would anybody, you know, I'm, I'm relatively young, 30 something. Why would anybody want to continue to be miserable for 40 years more? Why would you want to do that? That's right. Why would you want anybody else to feel that way? Welcome to the EQ for Entrepreneurs podcast. Like most business owners, you already know you need good business and marketing strategies to scale and be profitable. But at some point, you hit the dreaded wall where you feel stuck and frustrated. EQ for Entrepreneurs is for business owners and leaders who are honest enough to admit that they just might be the ones holding their business back and are brave enough to change that. We're Noble and Kathy, and every week we're having candid conversations about all things emotional intelligence and how growing that has allowed us to get out of our own way and is radically transforming both our businesses and our personal lives. This is the secret sauce strategy for modern entrepreneurs who are tired of hustling without seeing results and want to grow a business and a life that they love. Are you ready to take the next step in growing your emotional health? Have you been realizing your EQ just might be holding you back, but you're not exactly sure how or what to do about it? Don't worry, we got you. We are hosting a mini course this week where we're going to be teaching you the basics of emotional intelligence, kind of like an EQ 101. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. You ready? It's free, but it's only going to be free one time. The folks who turn in live this Thursday will get the course for free. And after that, this mini course is going to be $47. And trust me, it's going to be worth it. It'll be worth every dime and plus some. If you're ready to learn how to be emotionally healthy and take some real steps toward growing your EQ, this is where to start. Just go to eqforentrepreneurs.com forward slash emotional health for all the details. Sweet, what's up? Big Raymond, what's up? What's man? up, man? Your energy, your energy is uh turning it up right now, man. You are <laughs> lit. I thought I was lit. Nah. That's uh, right. I'm a people guy, bro. I love I love this hype. <laughs> That's right. Raymond, man, I'm so excited, dude. Thank you so much for joining us. For those of you all that may be listening to this podcast episode. We're also going live right now on Facebook and just so excited again, Raymond, for you, for you being willing to do this um, of course. journey, you know, this, this episode here, this journey, um, you know, when we first met in the military influencer co- uh, conference, Facebook group, yes, you know, sir. You, had, you had been impacting all of us in that group. But I, and I just really appreciate again, your willingness to give your time here. Uh, so man, tell us about yourself, Raymond, tell us about your, your journey of, of, of being an entrepreneur, a musician, an influencer, and how, you know, EQ kind of has played a role in that. Wow. Well, EQ means a little bit something different yeah. for musicians. EQ means equalization on sound waves and things like that. So that's where our synergy is. But I can start from the beginning. Basically, um, I grew up, I was actually born in the East Coast in New York, Newark, New Jersey. I'm a military brat. Um, every male in my family cousin, uncle, all that have been in the Marine Corps. So it's like a long tradition of being in the Marines and stuff like that. So a lot of the uncles and dads and stuff uh, basically traveled around and all the kids were the military brats. So my dad uh, was a Marine. I mean, not was a Marine, is a Marine, was a 
was an active duty Marine and he would always travel around and stuff. And I was a military brat. So I eventually ended up in Camp Pendleton, California, in that area in a city called Oceanside, California, right outside of Camp Pendleton. And uh, I grew up in Oceanside, California. I was like a small kid. I was like 4'11 and like maybe 90 pounds. Uh, just a small kid who just hated Marines at the time specifically because they were really mean and a whole bunch of bullies to me when I went out in the town on the weekends. But I didn't realize those were just Marines acting a fool out in town on the weekend on Liberty, but I didn't know what that was. That was my impression of Marines. Um, so I didn't like them. And I was always just like skateboarding and doing other extreme sports and riding bikes and stuff and doing that type of thing. And then eventually as I grew up and I got older, um, I had to get a job or get out. That's what my mom told me. So I started working at Taco Bell as a rapper, like literally wrapping up tacos. No, no way. For real. That's For real. my dream job, bro. Yeah. Taco Bell. I love Taco Bell. Yes. Um, but we, we can talk about that part later. But yeah, so I was a rapper at Taco Bell. Then I ended up being a manager there. And I was just like, man, my life is at a dead end right now because I just feel like there's more out there for me. Um, so I decided to go to college to learn drafting. So I went to school to learn drafting, doing different types of blueprints, electronical, electronical, is that a word? Uh, <laughs> electrical um, type of prints and, and, and landscaping as well as architectural prints, just learning everything about drafting via computer-aided drafting. Uh, programming and stuff like that. So I went and I got my associates. I'm like, wow, I got my degree. I don't have to work at Taco Bell anymore. Let me go to the nearest drafting firm and try to get a job. So I go there and I'm just like, listen, fresh out of school. Everything's fresh on my head. I know how to draft. Look, I need a job. And they're just like, um, you're overqualified. I'm like, overqualified? How am I overqualified? I just got out of school. I don't know anything. They're like, we're just, we're well, just overqualified. And I'm just like, man, I'll take the trash out, whatever. They're like, yeah, we don't have a spot for you. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh man. So I was really at rock bottom because I have to go back to Taco Bell. So at that time, I was just like, man, this is getting old. What am I going to do? And I said, hey, if I'm not at a certain point in my life, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go join the military. But if I join the military, it's going to be the Marines. So I went to the recruiter office in the Marines and they're like, hey, what's up? Like, what do you want to do? And I was just like, I want to join the Marines. And they're like, you sure? I'm just like, yeah, because at that time I was at such a rock bottom. I was just like, I don't care. I'll just join the military. I'm ready to die, all that, because it was right after 9-11. I literally watched the Twin Towers hit. And the, I literally watched the ten, Twin Towers get hit by the planes um, during, um, class one day and everybody was just like shocked. So I'm watching this in drafting class. And then later on, I'm making the decision to go overseas as a Marine ready to die. But I didn't know that the military had different jobs until I went home. I said, Hey mom, um, I know like I'm working at Taco Bell now, but I just kind of like enlisted in the Marine Corps. She's like the Marine Corps. Why'd you do that? She's like, okay, like, what job did you get? And I was just like, um, open contract. She's like, open contract. And my mom knew all about it specifically because all of my family is Marines as well as my dad was a Marine. So she knows all about it. She's like, open contract, that's no good. You're going to go to war. You're going to deploy with grunts and it's going to be like war and bad and all that. So you need to go back and tell her you want something different. And so I go back. And at the time, I just got introduced into hip hop. I got a CD of... Um, Notorious B.I.G. Ready, uh, <laughs> Notorious B.I.G. Life after death, not ready to die, but life after death. And when I got that, the uh, the spark of wanting to be a hip hop rapper was in my head. So as I went to the recruiter, and it was a female recruiter, she's blonde, marine recruiter. But do not let that fool you. She was fierce. She's like, so what do you want to do? And I was like, um. Do you have anything in entertainment? She's like, entertainment? What? Because I wanted to do some type of radio job or whatever because I was into hip hop. She's like, entertainment? She's like, hold on. And then so she does a little digging and she's like, you know what? The closest thing I got to entertainment is public affairs. Now get the F out of my office. And then like a week later, I went to boot camp and stayed in the Marine Corps as a public affairs professional, which translated into a reporter. So it. They, 
in boot camp, my drill instructors were just like, oh, I know what you're going to be. You're a private joker. And I didn't know what private joker meant. And she was referring, I mean, my recruiter was, re- not my recruiter, but um, the drill instructors, they were referring to private joker from the movie Full Metal Jacket. Got it. And, and so they're like, you're going to be a reporter. And and so like, they kind of like, were just giving me a hard time because they're just bas- basically saying, you got a desk job and all of that. And you're not going to see no action and you know, how are you going to join the Marines to get a desk job? So as I graduated boot camp and I went to MOS school to learn how to be a reporter, we had our higher ups watching us, like how, how we like did PT and how we just conducted ourselves and how our demeanor was. And I was more hardcore. I'm just like a little bit more rough around the edges and unfiltered and stuff. I've always been like this. And also, I had a high PFT score. I, like, I had a very high PFT score. Like, we were supposed to run uh, a three-mile run in 18 minutes. I ran it in 19. That was the fastest I can get. I know my Marine buddies and everybody else going to give me trash for that, but whatever. I'm honest. That's moving, minute man. 19-minute <laughs> run, 100 sit-ups, and 20 pull-ups. So I maxed out on everything except the run because if you can run 18-minute three miles, you're just a crazy beast animal. I don't know how you can do that, but I can only get it down to 19. But because my higher ups were watching, they're just like, this guy's in good shape, unbeknownst to me at the time. So they're like, we got a, the perfect assignment for him once he graduates school as a reporter. So I graduated school as a reporter and they're like, hey, um, we got a great assignment for you. We're going to send you to first Marine division. And I'm like, wow, first Marine division. That sounds great. That's awesome. Unbeknownst to me, first Marine division is an infantry unit out in Camp Pendleton, California, where I'm from. So not only did my mom prophesy my whole affiliation, but I got sent right back home. So I felt like, what? Like I didn't even join the Marine Corps, but I did. I I learned really quickly that what happened was because they assigned me to first Marine division, I wasn't just a reporter on top of that. I was this weird grunt hybrid to where I was attached to the grunts writing stories and taking pictures of them. So I would go wherever they would go. So it really didn't matter like my job, but I did have to take pictures on top of everything. So I would patrol and, and do all of that, do, do uh, mounted patrols, foot patrols. I would be in the air and all of that uh, later on in Iraq and Afghanistan uh, when I fast forward. Wow. Um, so I actually did exactly what my mom said that I would do um, in Iraq and Afghanistan. And then after that, I came back, I did some marketing gigs and stuff like that and stayed in the Marine Corps. I stayed in the Marine Corps for like 10 years. But in the middle of that, um, YouTube came out. And when YouTube came out, people were trying to figure out and do different things. And there wasn't any military or Marine Corps order for anything. And because there wasn't any military or Marine Corps order for anything regarding social media, um, military guys thought it was fun to make videos and ask out celebrities to the Marine Corps ball. I was one of three people to do that. I asked out Betty White. No way. That made international news while I was in the Marine Corps. So I'm a public affairs representative, usually briefing higher ups on how to conduct themselves in the media, making news. That was the worst possible thing that I could do at the moment because I'm supposed to stop a whole bunch of extra news other than we're training and we're fighting wars. And I'm adding into that with I'm asking out Betty White, one of the most famous people in the world ever. So I'm asking her out. Awesome. And and she um she ended up saying no. She ended up saying no. But right up so I was like I was I was actually happy about that because my nightmare was over because the higher ups in the Marines were giving me a problem with it. They're just like, oh you you know you're supposed to be a public affairs representative and a Marine and we don't do that. I don't know what this YouTube stuff is. You're going what, what do they call it? Viral or something? So imagine, like, they don't know what it is in 2012, like, what viral is and what, you know, videos are. And they're like, 300,000 views. A lot of people saw that. What's going on? And why are you on the news? And why is uh, Gail King talking about you? And all types of stuff. And my friends from Canada were calling me. They're just like, why are you on the news, bro? And then, but when she said no, I was happy and relieved, specifically because my nightmare was over. Or so I thought. Right after that, Linda Hamilton of Terminator fame, Sarah Connor asked me out on YouTube. So Sarah Connor asked me out. 
So she made her own viral video. So I'm not going to say no to her. I ended up taking Sarah Connor to the ball. You are joking me, bro. Uh -oh. I got pictures. I got pictures. No, yes, that sir. is awesome. So I take Sarah Connor to the ball <laughs> and I pick her up from the airport and everything. It was the weirdest thing. She's a small little petite woman and so beautiful. Is she cool? Yeah, she's cool as a fan. Wow. Um, she, she like, she's like, I got it. I'll, I'll, I'll pay for dinner and stuff. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm good. You, you make more dough than I do. That's right. I was like, you were married to James Cameron. So, um, yeah, if you don't mind, if you could get this bill. <laughs> um, no, I didn't, I didn't, I was going to pay for it, but no, but for real, like, um, she's, she's so cool. She's so cool. She's like a legit person plays words with friends and gardens and, and real, a lot of cool stuff. And wow. she's a cool person. You still and keep I, in touch with her? No, I mean, it's just, we, we went on the, we, you know, we dated or whatever, but that was it, you know, um, and that, that was it, but she's still cool and stuff like that. But, um, that happened. But once that happened, they were calling me, you know, Hey, you know, prima donna and you're like quasi famous and this and that. And like, we don't got no time for no famous stuff in the Marine Corps. What are you doing? And, and then I realized that there was nothing I could do because from that point on, I was like that famous character in the Marine core at that specific time. And I was like, wait a minute, I think I got something because there's, I think I got a knack for social media or something. I didn't know what it was called, but I knew there was something with YouTube and video and viral and something about it. I didn't know what it was. Right. And then I was just like, man, it just seems like this is what I should be doing. So after that point, after a couple more years in the Marine Corps, I extended for a little bit and, and had a unit um, thing in New Orleans. So I did some time in New Orleans. But after that, I got out the Marine Corps because they're like, either you stay in and you become a staff NCO or you get out because I was a sergeant at that time. So yeah. I would have to stay in. And I didn't want to be a paper pusher because if you're staff NCO, you become a paper pusher. You're an admin immediately. Right. Because it was fun running around with the grunts with the camera. I love doing that. Um, and I hated being in the office. So like I would hate being back with the other reporters who were in the office. So I'm just like, you guys don't understand. I'll, you know, I came from the grunts. I'm like, a. I'm a, I'm a super pogue. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, I don't, I just don't vibe with y'all. Y'all are weak. You know what I mean? Super pogue. I Girl. love it. Cause I was infantry. So I, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So like, and so I was with infantry and, you know, I, you know, got my car or you guys would call it cab. Right. I got my car and, and all of that. So like, I would, grunts would always hit me up that didn't know me that didn't serve with me. And just like, what's that for pogue? Da -da -da. I'm just like, okay, I'm a pogue and you're infantry but where's yours? And then they would shut up. Right. So right. who, who's the grunt now? Like, I'm just like, I own you. <laughs> I was like, I own you. Oh, and by the way, after I got in a firefight, I took pictures as well. And there's proof. <laughs> you have proof? Oh, you don't. So shut up. Stop calling me Pope. I'm super. It will be Mr. Super Pope to you. Thank you. That's right. That's right. Well, so Actually, did you get introduced to the EQ in that, in the Marines? Oh, it wasn't in the Marines. Okay. So let me, let me finish, um, this part oh, yeah, of the yeah. story. So, um, I came back, um, and from Iraq, Afghanistan did the, um, the viral videos and all of that got stationed in new Orleans after new Orleans, I decided to get out because I didn't want to be a staff NCO and be a paper pusher. And I decided that I was going to get out to rap. Cause they're like, Hey, what are you going to do? And I was like, I'm going to be a rapper. She's they're like, you're going to be a rapper, a, a rap. Cause imagine that I'm telling my staff and CEO that I'm going to get out to be a rapper. And at that time there was only like what shaggy and like the girl from golden girls. Um, there's like a couple of famous Marines, but like, it was like you getting out and being famous as the former Marine is like slim to none. There's like some mil some former uh, military people like uh, Regis Philbin and uh, RIP and, um, who was it? Jimi Hendrix, RIP, uh, Elvis, RIP. Like there's some, a lot of uh, famous military people, but it's slim to none. And if they got famous, like they got mega famous, like all those people that I named got mega famous. Like, right. Um, so it was just like, get out to be a rapper. Ha, huh? that's funny. And, but right now it's hilarious right now because it just. Now were you working on it the whole time while you were in your craft? Yeah, yeah but I sucked. Oh, God. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't. I sucked because I wasn't doing it. I wasn't, I didn't know like the mechanics of it. I didn't go to school and didn't get a degree to do any um, engineering or EQing, uh, any of that. So I kind of like, 
I was okay. And then I got, I was getting better, but I wasn't, if you don't take whatever you're doing, like seriously as this is my career, I'm going to do this. Like, I'm not going to fail. This is my life. All if you in. don't do that, you're not going to be, yeah, you have to be all in. You're not going to be as good as you can be. So I was okay. I was okay. And I started doing some videos and winning some online like contests and things like that. But I didn't go by the Marine rapper. I went by R Sonic because I could run fast. Like, like R Sonic stand for Raymond. And then Sonic was Sonic the Hedgehog. Cause I love Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, I was like, Oh yeah, Sonic, R Sonic, you know? And then I eventually, once I changed my name to the Marine rapper, after I started utilizing a lot of the marketing tactics and techniques that I learned in the Marine Corps, everything started to blow up. And then I started realizing that social media is actually, um, is the best way to test your music. Just put it out there. You don't, you don't want to take things for, for, uh, you don't want to take things personal at all. So if somebody goes, Oh my gosh, that last song you did suck. You don't go like, Oh, F you buddy. No, the best thing to actually do. And if any artists are listening right now, if somebody says you suck, like, Oh, I'm sorry that, you know, that, that wasn't for you, but Hey, Hey, is there a way that I could improve? Or is there something that you would like to hear from me? Mm, That's great. Nine times out of 10, they tell me and they go, Hey, and then also they apologize for being rude because they're because and i'm like oh okay oh you want a song about the military okay i can do that next time and then i put it out and they're like this is exactly what i want and i was like oh, okay thank you and then now i know what type of songs i'm gonna put on my album so i don't waste money in studio time or anything like that right right for sure well it, that takes emotional maturity to even ask that question you know what i mean yeah. to even ask the question hey hey critics like critique me, right? That takes a lot of emotional maturity, bro. That's excellent. And I learned it over time. And, and also it was weird. I got, it got forced on me a little bit with the Marine Corps because we got trained to just take whatever anybody says to us and not, you know what I mean? Somebody could be yelling in our face and calling us all types of names and things like that. And we just have to just be like, ah, that's nothing, whatever. But I started to, to realize that and realize that I can get better. So that's Eventually awesome. I would get introduced to EQ, but not yet. So after I got out and I was like, okay, I have a little bit of traction and stuff like that. After I got out, I ended up moving to LA. When I moved to LA, I went to the LA film school to learn music production as well as music business. Got my degree, got connected with a nonprofit called Bunker Labs. Shout out Todd Connor. You're the man. Um, he believed in me. And, and I signed up for the veterans and residence program. So if, a veteran out there is listening, you should sign up for the veterans and residence program in collaboration with WeWork. It's outstanding. Um, and I signed up as a record label owner, uh, a all military record label, uh, because I realized that I would, I didn't want to come to like a ceiling or ever stop being fresh at any moment. I always want to be fresh. Hip hop's all, hip hop's all about being fresh at any moment. Like the newest clothes, the newest shoes, the newest styles, the newest slang, all of that. So like, Mm -hmm. I always want to be fresh. I never don't want to be fresh. So I signed up as a military record label and I learned with my peers how to effectively uh, gather and corral a whole bunch of different personalities, a a lot of different people by using the, the skills that I learned in the Marine Corps uh, just talking to people um, because I, w- I was a reporter, but also not to take things personal because I was a Marine. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm like learning these things. And then I ended up meeting uh, one lady who actually went through some EQ training. And she's like, oh, some of the things that you're doing is emotional ch- intelligence. She said, you're doing emotional intelligence things. I was like, oh, I didn't really realize that. And she's like, yeah, I would like to tell you about it, but we didn't get a chance to really like delve into it at that moment. But, you know, I started to hear more and more about it being in LA. Right. And then, you know, albums later and and features later and Apple music features later of my albums and things going viral. um, I ended up meeting a lady who introduced me to an EQ training out in LA and I didn't know about it at all. I didn't know anything about it. She's like, I can't really tell you about it because this is all a part of the thing. Um, but it's emotional intelligence and it just makes you a better person, how to deal with people and how to be more empathetic and have sympathy for people and just understand emotions a lot better. And I think it would make you a better person. So you need to sign up. So I signed up for the training and it blew my mind. Really, Bruh. I was just like, 
wow, why am I like, it was like the reverse of the Marine Corps. Yeah, right. In the Marine Corps, they're like, you better not cry or you're weak. And there they're like, go ahead and cry. It's okay. That makes you strong. So it was literally, EQ is the opposite of the Marine Corps. So they're like, explore your feelings. Marine Corps, they're like, don't explore your feelings or I'll let this foot explore your rear end. Like, you know, things like that. So I realized it was a stark contrast, but I was able to open up and realize that I encage myself and I imprisoned myself mm-hmm. in these jails um, that I didn't know I was. I was blaming uh, you know, family members, friends for things that I felt when that wasn't necessarily true. And I actually use EQ to have com- hard conversations with family members and say, hey, you know, I feel this way about you and, and I've been holding on to this and that's why I've had such regret and discontent with you. And they're mm-hmm. like, wow, I never knew you felt like that. Thank you for being brutally honest. Thank you. And let's build our relationship. Wow. And, you know, that's awesome. it was a lot of things. Yeah, it was a lot of things with uh, my family and stuff like that, that I had to express. And once I expressed it, I felt a lot better. And, and since then I've had greater relationships and greater uh, family relationships and interactions with people because I have been able to, to not take things so personal. Like I've realized that, you know, a lot of times when people are unhappy um, sounding, it's because they are unhappy, not unhappy with me. They're unhappy with themselves, mm-hmm. right? They don't realize the, the mental jail that they're in or emotional jail that they're in. That's right. That's All because of this emotional intelligence training that I went through, um, as well as maturity. Um, you know, going through so much stuff with the military, going through so much stuff, being an entrepreneur, you know, failing and bouncing back, and going through so much stuff in social media. Um, I realized that there are bigger and greater things that I could do for others and myself if I would just get out of my own way. And that's what EQ did for me, right? Love it. Emotional intelligence was a lifesaver. And I feel that um, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be able to be such an asset to other individuals and serve those other individuals. Like I told you before the Zoom, when I was in the green room with you, like I was just like, I was talking with somebody and helping them out for free specifically because it's just what I love to do. And so- if I can consult or mentor somebody to make them in a better emotional state, I'll do it um, for free at times specifically because some people, um, you know, just need the extra boost, the extra push. And if they want to meet me halfway, I'll meet them halfway and let's get it. Let's do it. Let's, let's grow. Let's thrive emotionally and intelligently and treat a lot of other people better uh, and be more aware and be more self-aware. Emotional intelligence also helped me be more self-aware. And because it's made me more self-aware, I've been able to be more successful in every asset of my, I mean, be more successful in every facet of my life because I was self-aware in a lot of situations. I have been able to explain and connect with different other individuals that I may have not been able to if I was so closed off. So if somebody goes, oh my gosh, that song you made sucks. And I'd be like, yo, forget you or F you or whatever. Instead of that, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm sorry you feel that way. Um, I'm sorry I, I couldn't, you know, create something that you would like. Uh, what would you like me to create? Or if not, I can point you to another musician because I have a label now. So I was like, what would you like to hear? Um, if you want to hear them, you can hear them or you can hear me. But I'm not going to take it personal because everybody has their own tastes in music, food, et cetera. So let's, let's come to a conclusion. And they're like, you know what? I respect you, man. I might not agree with you, but I respect you because – you didn't come at me like everybody else would. And I'm just like, what? I'm not going to jump down your throat because you don't like my music or you don't like the message that I'm saying, or you don't like what I said, or you don't like what I'm wearing. Why would I do that? That wastes a whole bunch of time. Why not connect with the individual and use emotional intelligence to do so? Why not do that? Um, and, and because I asked myself that question, I've been way more content in life, have way more um, in-depth conversations and, my quality of life has risen to that of something that wouldn't have been possible without EQ. 
Raven, man, you are dropping some fire, bro. I'm loving it, man. That's that's so. I'm just saying how it is, bro. I'm just saying how it is. No, that's that's exactly right. I mean, you you have you have hit on so many powerful points, and how because that was one of my questions I was going to ask you is how has your emotional growth journey impacted you personally and professionally? And I mean, and you you just nailed it. Like to have more fulfilling relationships that previously. How many times have, I mean, I have, I have had conversations with people literally seventies and 80 year olds that have not talked to family members for 40 years because of some family clash and you miss 40 years of relationship with somebody because of your EQ, because of their EQ and like how much of life are we missing out on because, and I love that term that you use, we're in our emotional prison. Right, we're we we're, were emotionally hijacked, and 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 not just you know from a personal standpoint, but also professionally. Yeah, right? I've limited, limited my whole business career because I have been in in my emotional prison. I didn't feel feel worthy. I didn't feel good enough. I didn't feel all this stuff. Right, and then the, the more success I would get, I would automatically start to self sabotage. Yeah. Right. And so as I have grown emotionally, those limits, those boundaries are starting to, to fall off. What's interesting. So let me ask you this. Yeah. Do you feel like the military community and the entrepreneur community could benefit from emotional growth training? 100%. And I say that because we went through such a mental transformation to become the warrior that could possibly be in a very stressful or violent situation. And in order to make that individual, you have to strip away a lot of that person. Mm. You just do of like the personality Mm. and the emotion, because if you're going to war because war isn't pretty and you have to defend yourself and the other troops with you, there's no room to hesitate in a snap and a flash. Something could happen. So if you're being all emotional in that situation, people die. You can't have that. Right. So I feel grateful for the ability to kind of numb myself in those situations. But I, I feel like we also need to have something on the other end of that, um, that prepares us for civilian life again and, and, and being compassionate and being emotional and allowing others to express themselves emotionally, especially men, because there's a lot of of the uh, you know jokes going back and forth about men being you know weak or or not tough as they should be if they cry or they express their emotions. And I feel like that needs to be totally debunked. Like if a man wants to cry, wants to be emotional, or express how he's feeling, he should be able to do that. And because they're not able to do that. That's why we see the veteran suicide go up so high because they feel like they can't talk to anyone. And we talk about, I'm about to drop some bombs. It's going to be controversial here. We talk about 22 a day, 20 a day, veteran suicide. And we're like, oh my gosh, we need to stop this. No, you need to stop this. You need to be the change. If you say veteran suicide is so counterproductive and so detrimental to the veteran community, you need to be the first line of offense. You need to be the first line of defense. And you need to say, hey, listen, maybe I'm the problem. Maybe I could have talked to Private Schmuckatelli and didn't give him a hard time. And he may be smiling because everybody rags on him and all that. But you don't know that could have been the straw that broke his back. And now he wants to kill himself because his old sergeant said that he's weak if he cries and stuff like that. Like, we don't need to do that. What we need to do as a veteran community is we need to be the first line of defense and we need to be be that veteran suicide prevention, not be that veteran who is doing push-ups in lieu of that veteran. Like, I want to do, like I posted the other day, I want to do push-ups with my buddy, not for my buddy. Mm. Like, come on, we need to actually be smart enough and emotionally intelligent enough to be like, you know what, hey, hey, bro, Hey, I know everybody's ragging on you, but hey, bro, you can talk to me. Like my number's this. DM me, message me. If you have something to get off your chest, get it off your chest. You can cry. You can here's my shoulder. You can hug me, bro. It's okay. Whatever society says this week. Hey, don't pay no, no attention to that. You know, there's a time to be a tough guy, and there's a time to be, you know, emotionally intelligent. And I feel like we need to 
kind of grab that and infuse that into a lot more of our veterans and our and our uh, former military first responders, everybody who has to have like a violent type of job because we need something that works. And a lot of times, some of this therapy, some of this uh, push-up stuff, some of the, the physical fitness stuff, the drinking, all these things, they, they haven't been helping because we still have veterans killing themselves. Right. Well, and I, I love what you said, Raymond, when, we, when, when you had interviewed me on the, I mean, the Military Influencer Conference for that, that when you were going live and stuff, and you said something I thought was powerful. You know, you said rather than, do, than doing, you know, 22 push-ups a day, how about listening yeah. for 22 minutes a day? Yes, sir. Right? Can you reach? And I thought, man, that's powerful, bro. Can you reach out to a veteran and just say, hey, man, how you doing? Right? Just And just shut up and listen. Right? Listen, be an active listener, right? Because there's therapy in just, there's catharsis and healing just in being a good listener. And then, you know, we talked about when we had that conversation, too, Two other things that I think are very powerful. So one is active listening, but also yeah. validate and affirm how they're feeling. Not nice. that you have to agree with how they're feeling, but just validate and affirm so that they feel there's also therapy and healing in just feeling understood, feeling like, man, you know, you, you get me, you understand me. Just that feeling is, is cathartic all by itself. And I think exactly what you said there, man, is just, Hey, 22 minutes a day of listening, talking to, our, 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 you know, military folks, active duty mm-hmm. and veterans would go a long way, you know, and I love that. Hey, well, instead of doing 22 pushups, can you talk to 22 veterans, exactly. you know, in a row, one, you know, one a day, 22 in a row and, and share that story, right. Share that story. And man, think about if we, man, that's so powerful, bro. If everybody did that, it would be, we, everyone, would, we would solve it. We would solve it. Pushups, man, that have been done. And you put bro. the thousands, tens of thousands of pushups, and you put a name behind that, a mm-hmm. Raymond Lott, a Noble Gibbons, a, you know, fill in the blanks of all these different veterans, man, how many lives would be changed? And like you said, that number could be dropping. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And I uh, just an update. I actually did that. I actually did something, a variation of what we talked about. I actually did that on my Instagram. I actually said, hey, this Sunday, I'm going live for 22 minutes with people. And I want you to tell me some good news. And so people logged on and for two minutes each, I had 10 people log on and tell me what they had going on. Um, Good. And I didn't want to talk about no politics. I didn't want to talk about nothing controversial. I said, tell me what you got good going on. It doesn't matter. You can say anything. Some people came on and said, I have, you know, this going on or I'm doing good. I love my wife, whatever it was. They came on and said it. And I love it because they had a platform and I just sat there and I was like, Hey, I'm gonna shut up. And there's no, there's no going back and forth with you. I'm just going to actively listen to you mm-hmm. and then validate and affirm that and, and, and go forth with that. Uh, because a lot of times, especially in the veteran community, we come off very entitled. Like everything is for us. Wow. Everything is not for us. And this is coming from me. I have police and veteran in my family, long line, uncles, cousins, all that. And I hear a lot of veterans go, hey, what about the veterans? Hey, what about our police? Hey, what about our first responders? What about them? We're not talking about that right now. I love them too. We, I, serve, I serve them daily. That's great. But if one, especially in America, if one America is, if one, <laughs> one America, if one American is hurting, we should all be hurting for them. We should all be feeling. We should all be using that emotional intelligence. And we should be like, you know what? Look, I know, you know, I'm all about my first responders, my cops and my veterans and all that. But hey, this civilian is important too. This fellow American is important too. If we are such badasses as veterans and military and first responders, and we're such a hero, why can't we be hero to our own community? Why do we have to receive all the time? Why can't we give? And in order to know how to do that, in order to see that, I feel like it takes a certain level of emotional intelligence and selflessness. We should be at the forefront of it. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know why it's even an issue. I, I, don't, I don't get it, especially with all the stuff going on in the world with the racial injustice and um, the, the COVID-19 and 
and, and lockdowns and things like that and all these other issues outside of the veteran and the uh, first responder and all that, we should be at the forefront. Hey, let me roll up my sleeves. What can I do to help this? I know this situation isn't about me right now. I just want to help. You don't even have to put the veteran stamp on it. You don't have to put the, the, uh, the blue line on it. You have to do nothing. Look, what can I do to help and to continue to serve? Because I feel like when, once you say that oath, you, it, you, should still, you should still abide by that. Once you say it, hey, you should just keep on abiding by it. But there's a lot of people out there that just don't have, um, you know, the blessing of receiving um, that emotional intelligence or that knowledge or that training. So I understand that. So I do have that, you know, that understanding and that um, empathy for them. Um, and I, I try to do the best I can. I use my social media platform to do that. You know, I love, you know, rapping and, and making jokes and, and, you know, memes and and ragging on my fellow military guys. I know you probably saw that. I, I did some memes and stuff like that, you know, just all in fun, you know, just to have everybody laughing and chuckling and stuff like that. But I also feel like there's also a time to be, you know, selfless and, 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 and be like, hey, you know what? Let's let's help out a civilian. And I don't need no I don't need no credit at all. I can just help out the civilian just because I'm about what I say I'm about. Right. Whatever you say you're about, just be about that. If yeah. you about wearing leather flag jackets, be about it. If you're about an awesome, outstanding salt and pepper beard like Noble, be about it. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying is just be about it. But it takes that EQ. It takes that emotional intelligence. And, and it's crazy because if you, if you think about EQ in forms of music, EQ is leveling out all the sound waves in a certain mix of a song. So if you are EQing your life and yourself, you are evening out and leveling out all the different waves and peaks and valleys in your life. So everything sounds good to everyone. Or most people, if they like your type, <laughs> if they like your type of music, whether it's hip hop, rock or whatever. But that's a, that goes the same for EQ training. I feel like it levels out your life and it makes you a better person, more well-rounded. And it allows you to see a lot of things that you wouldn't see. Why would anybody, you know, I'm, I'm relatively young, 30 something. Why would anybody want to continue to be miserable for 40 years more? Why would you want to do that? That's right. Why would you want anybody else to feel that way? That's right. But I think what happens though, is I think we, we become, we become the, the, the dysfunction becomes our new norm. Right. And so we get, you know, whether it's like, you know, you, you're used to walking with a limp, for example, or you're used to chronic back pain, same thing emotionally happens. We're used to that emotional injury that we've been carrying around that emotional baggage we've been carrying around because you don't know life without it. That's Mm -hmm. all, you know. And so, I don't think a lot of people have experienced that emotional freedom of, of working on, on this stuff. Right. I mean, look, you know, man, this is another thing too. And I love your EQ analogy of how it stabilizes your life. It it almost makes me wonder what the emotional intelligence is of our nation. Mm. Right. (laughs) Because, Mm. you know, I could say, you know, well, that red in your jacket, that offends me. Right. Or yeah. that, that, you know, that the stars offend, you know, right. The, the, the rounds, right. I mean, yeah, you can say crazy. everything, you know what I'm saying? It's crazy, man. And so what does that say about the emotional intelligence of, of our nation and the emotional health of our nation? Because we have all these spikes that like the emotional, if you, if you were to chart the emotional uh, uh, curve of our nation it would be an EKG monitor. It'd be peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys. But I feel like what you said, the healthier that we can get, not only, and I think it starts as an individual, right? To change the nation, I think you got to start the individual. The healthier we get emotionally, our own individual peaks and valleys will start to turn into sine curves, right? And it won't be as as extreme, either ups or downs, will be more emotionally stable and emotionally, you know, predictable, which is a win for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Personally and professionally. Yeah. Let me ask you this. How has your emotional growth journey, your emotional intelligence, how has it impacted you specifically as an entrepreneur, as a musician? It's impacted me very much directly. I actually use EQ daily, emotional intelligence daily, because I work with so many different type of people. 
I work with so many type of personalities and so many types of news, you know, political, racial, whatever, uh, health wise, regardless of what it is. But I, I get pulled in so many different directions. EQ has allowed me to realize I need to protect my energy and only give energy to certain things. Um, it's also allowed me to see when somebody needs help, see when to put myself on the, the back burner, see when to put myself on the front burner, um, see when I need to talk to my family, see, uh, actually EQ has also helped me to know when to apologize, when to not apologize, <laughs> when to be happy, when to be sad, when to cry, when to laugh, when to like, yo, man, I got these Girl Scout cookies and I'm proud of it. And uh, yes, I'm eating these Girl Scout cookies. Like, you know what I mean? Like, whatever, you know, when to know when to like joke, like, yeah, I got a little, uh, child doll from the Mandalorian. So, and I'm a grown man. And anybody have anything to say about it? Oh, no, you don't because I'm living my life. Like it doesn't affect you. You know what I mean? Like I'm not hurting nobody. I got my Girl Scout cookies and I got my Mandalorian doll here and I love it. It makes me happy. And I want you to do what makes you happy as well. I'm not hurting nobody. If I want to wear a flag jacket every day, I can do it. You know what I mean? It's just, it, it just, EQ just allowed me to do a lot of different things where I, I basically increase the value and the quality of my life because I realize that we don't have much of it. And so we need to enjoy it while we're here. And then also encourage other individuals to enjoy their best life. So EQ is like, it's literally a lifesaver. 100% agree. So life, and, specific, and because it's been a lifesaver, life has been tasting a lot better. <laughs> oh, I love it, man. I love it. What are your bars, man? You're sneaking it into it. I love it. So... Um, how, how have you handled the, the valleys of being an entrepreneur, of being an influencer? How, you know, it, it's part of the journey, right? It's, you know, when I tell, mm -hmm. I, I coach a lot of, of young entrepreneurs or, or, you know, newer entrepreneurs and stuff. And, you know, the, I, I use the analogy of, of like the UFC mixed martial arts, right? Is mm -hmm. being a mixed martial artist. I don't care if you're the greatest in the world, you're going to get punched in the face. That's part well, of the sure. journey, right? Same thing as an entrepreneur, that's part of the deal. You are going to get punched in the face. Facts. And no matter how we respond to that, right? We can ex we can respond with a peak in a valley, or we can we we can be chill and and kind of like respond the way you've you know expressed a number of times of how you handle your critics. Hey, hey man, hey, that's thanks for your feedback. I totally appreciate that. You know how can I improve? Right? That yeah. That's like that totally takes the wind out of their sails when before they want to attack you or they want to go after you when you're like, Hey man, that's great feedback or great input. You know, how else could I improve? It's like, wow. Right. That's, that's so powerful. How have you handled or how do you handle your valleys as an entrepreneur? Perspective. So EQ and, and maturity has coupled together. EQ and uh, maturity coupled together has made me look at things differently. So, for example, if I lose money on something or I lose a friend or lose a connection or something doesn't go how I want it to go, I'm like, oh, good. I'm hungry. It makes me hungrier. I'm at the bottom again. Yeah, let's fight to the top again. It's so good when you when you have to fight again. And I remember I, I, I just look back and I'm just like, oh, I remember when I first started and I was so hungry. Yes, I can't wait to have a reason to be hungry again. And then I'll be like, Oh, I took a loss. Good. Like I, people will think I'll never come back and I want to prove everybody wrong. Yes. I'm, I, I'm good. So it's perspective. I just look at it differently. Um, a lot of people felt, um, that when president Trump retweeted one of my raps that that put me in a certain area and they're just like, Oh, did that mess up your business? Did that mess up how people look at you and stuff? And I'm just like, Nope. I was like, cause I'm my own thing. I'm me. I'm not, I'm not like, dependent on something because it's my perspective. I was like, that's cool. I, I, I love that. Who can say that they have been working for years on their music and the president recognized them? N not many people, like not many people at all. Like, so like literally I look at, I look at that as like the commander in chief. I was in the military and the commander in chief says my rhymes are fire. 
That's crazy. Like, you, no, no matter Republican or Democrat, that's wild. That is wild. People won't get that recognition in their whole lifetime. It doesn't matter if you like them or hate them. Like, that's crazy. There's so much news, so many people in America, and he thought that my rap was so dope that he would share. That's crazy. So that was my perspective. And they're like, oh, did it hurt you because it puts you in like a Republican conservative box? I was just like, no, not really, because I'll have my views, but people know I keep it 100 and I keep it authentic and I keep it transparent and they can talk to me anytime they want to. And then if they have an issue, I'm gonna be like, okay, well, why do you feel like that way? And then they get to know me. They're like, oh, I get it. You don't, you're not defined by a situation. You're defining the situation. Mm. And because of your perspective and you, I wouldn't have been able to do that if I didn't have that emotional intelligence and realize like, Hey, all these situations, all these things, all these people act in certain different ways or changing up or switching up because an event happened in my life. It's not because they don't like me because a lot of these people don't even know me really. You know what I mean? Like noble, like, you know, me more than a lot of people. Like we've, we've had chances to talk, um, for, for, for a while. We talked to hour the other day and, you know, more hours here and, you know, DM and all that stuff and interacting on social media, but most people do not know me. And so once I realized that through my perspective, I have been a lot happier. I'm like, these people don't know me. <laughs> it's funny. Why would I be mad if somebody said my rap sucks or they hate me because now I'm some, some mascot for Trump or something, you know what I mean? Cause that's the way they look at it when I'm just like, I get it. I understand where you, how you guys could feel that way, but that's not it because I've always been my own thing. People know I've always been my own thing and it's all good. You know, if you feel that certain way, but as long as God, my mama, you know, uh, <laughs> as long as God and my mama approve, I'm good. My mom was like, and, and, and mind you, the black community we normally don't mess with anything conservative or anything like Trump or any of that. My mom was like, baby, I cannot wait till you go to the white house. I am proud of you. Like to hear like a black mom say that in this climate, when there's a lot of uh, injustices in the, in the communities and stuff like that, to hear her say that, be like, listen, I'm proud of you and I'm not going to judge you. I love you regardless. And I cannot wait for, you know, you to step foot in the White House, like who can say that they've ever done that in their life and been invited and things like that for, for my mom to say that is like, well, I was just like, you think I care about what these internet people say? Like my mom blesses me. What? She had, she made me and she says she approves. So why would I ever think that any of you guys who want to hate on me even matter to my life? Are you serious right now? So I was just like, oh, it's all it has to do with is perspective. And I was able to see the perspective specifically because of EQ. Man, I love that. I absolutely love that. And there's a lot of layers in there because, you know, your mom is an emotional support network. And I think that's, that's something that is very yeah. critical for all of us is, is to have that. And if you don't have that, find that, start reaching out and be that for somebody else before, you know, you can have that expectation that someone's going to be that for you. So I love that story. And I love what you said about, cause as a recovering people pleaser addict, <laughs> I feel you, you're, you're, you're totally, I mean, this is so helpful because I love what you said that, listen, you don't define me. I define the situation. Exactly. Or for me before people would absolutely define me, right? Well, what does Raymond think of me? Or what does Susie yeah. What does Bob think of me? What does Frank think of me? What's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I would totally try to conform, be this chameleon yeah. so much so that I didn't even know who I was. So it's tough to be authentic and transparent if you don't even know who you are. If you're trying to please yeah. somebody else, you don't even know who you are. Yeah. And, and how effective are you going to be as an influencer, as an entrepreneur, if, if you're not even connected to you know, who God made you and how he made you and all that stuff. So that's powerful, bro. Okay, kind of wrapping up here. Let me ask you this. Um, what advice would you share with others, Raymond, that, okay, man, I haven't had the, the big ball of training that you've had in EQ and stuff. Yeah. What advice would you give to either entrepreneurs or military folks on, on their, you know, their emotional growth journey? Meaning what could you, can you elaborate? Yeah. Like it's kind of broad tips. Um, what tips or direction? Like, okay, I'm hearing Raymond talk and he's talking about EQ and emotional intelligence and emotional health and stuff. 
like now what right now what what do i do where do i go what's my next play what's my next move okay so your next move would be listen (laughs) just shut up (laughs) and this is coming from a person who talks over music for a living shut up like just listen to somebody and 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 listen to your significant other, listen to your friends, start practicing your listening. I mean, because not everybody's able to have that big baller training yet because the training that I went to in, in LA, that was a lot of money. Um, but, and I was able to, you know, I was able and I was fortunate to have that that big baller training um, because, you know, working and all that and have that money to do that. But if you're not able to have that, start with listening. After you After you do listening, Okay. Start engaging with individuals and really have legit connections with these individuals. Not like, Hey, how you doing? And you're like, Oh, I'm good. And you're like, all right. And then you move on. Somebody says, how are you doing? Say, how are you doing back? And they're like, Oh, I'm good. But like, no, really, how are you doing? Like literally like how, how are, how's your mind? How's, how's your emotional intelligence? How's, how's this, how's that? Um, or if somebody says, one of the things that people say have, have been saying a lot lately is, Oh, I hope you're doing good. Mm, that's not it. Like for me, like, how are you doing? Cause to me, if you go, I hope you're doing well, what that does is it tells me that you don't want to have a conversation with me. You're just saying, I hope you're doing well. Like I want it. I want you to really probe and I really want you to ask. And I really want you to listen once you are asked that question or you're asking that question and When people see that you're actually actively listening and you validate and you affirm, you don't have to necessarily agree. They're going to have more respect for you and they're going to open up more at that point. So if you feel like, and this is going for everybody out there who, who may be new to EQ and emotional intelligence. If you feel that your connections are kind of superficial and base level, it's because of you. You're not putting in that work. You're not putting in that effort. You need to go out there and you need to put in that work and that effort and don't blame anybody but yourself. But also, once you put in that work and that effort, you have to know when to call it quits as far as protecting your energy. So it's listening, asking questions, as well as actively listening and also protecting your energy. You could be giving too much, you know, you could be talking to some, a lot of people and you could be asking a lot of questions and not particularly paying attention to yourself and stretching yourself thin. It's good to have self-care. It's good to have rest. It's good to eat a Girl Scout cookie. It's good to laugh at, at shows and cartoons or whatever. It doesn't matter. If you like doing something, don't let nobody tell you that you can't do it. Like if you're a grown man and you like to watch cartoons, cool. If you're a grown woman and you like to do arts and crafts, cool, whatever it is, or vice versa. Even that, like those, like gender norms. If you, if you're a grown man and you like to do crafts, do it. If you're, if you're a grown woman and you want to go, uh, four wheeling, do it. Don't let nobody tell you, you can't do anything, you know, take some time out for yourself as well. And then just repeat the cycle, you know, listen, ask questions, be empathetic. Don't take anything personal and have some time for yourself. And that would be my advice to people. And that's what I practice daily. I'm not perfect at it. I'm still a work in progress. I know, no, when we talked about that, like you feel that you feel the same way as me. Like we don't, we're not at the top level of it. And I don't want to be at the top level of that. Cause that would make me left. That would make me less hungry. I want to always be hungry. I want to always be eager. I always want to be grinding. I always want to be like, yo, know, regardless of what anybody says good or bad, I'm going to still keep grinding. I think, I don't know if I said it to you about um, the whole concept of if somebody says F you, I'm good. If somebody says, thank you, I'm good. I'm still on my track. It doesn't matter. You could say whatever and you're not going to ruin my day because I have predetermined my day is going to be outstanding because I had my Girl Scout cookies. And regardless of what you say, I still had some Girl Scout cookies that somebody across the world in another nation in the impoverished area wouldn't ever have. And they would just pray for a drop of clean water, let alone a Girl Scout cookie. So we need to be more grateful. We need to be more appreciative and listen. And I just feel that's, that's it. We need to, we just need to be better people and be more um, cognizant of what's going on in the world and help others. Love it. Love it. Such great skinny. Okay. Now I'm going to put you on the spot here a little bit, but I think, I think you're going to be able to handle this. Can you drop a couple bars on us? Yeah. 
Illiterate, gorilla mind, militant. I represent for my brothers, killing it for a living. It's rap, diligent, ignorant. I X man slash lyricist, the weapon experiment, weapon experience. Yeah, I put years in this, but they ain't hearing him till he's making appearances. I know my addition and I know what the difference is. My bars gripping because I'm pinning life sentences. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. That was awesome. That was great, bro. How do we follow you? How do we find you? How do we follow you? Yo, you can you can follow me everywhere at the Marine Rapper. Literally, the Marine Rapper everywhere. You can Google my name. It really doesn't matter what you do. You can find me everywhere. I do that because I like to keep it simple, stupid. They taught me that in the Marine Corps. I like keep everything Barney style. Everything just easy to remember anything. So if you guys want to reach out to me, DM me, whatever, at the Marine Rapper everywhere. And I'll talk with you. Sometimes I go live with all different types of people because I just feel like we all need to be about what we say we're about. If you ain't about it, don't do it. If you are, do it. It's just simple. Just find a new mission if you ain't. But if you are, hey, you should be uh, going strong on that mission. So I'll see you guys at the Marine Rapper everywhere. Love it. Thank you so much for those y'all that are checking out the podcast. You know, we love helping entrepreneurs navigate the emotional journey of running a business by helping you grow your emotional intelligence. You can check us out at eqforentrepreneurs.com. Check us out on our, on our podcast. Please rate and review. Thank you so much, Raymond, for your time, your wisdom. So excited to go back through this and take some notes, man. God bless you and have a great day, brother. Thank you, bro.